In this video, we will learn about pinnacle pinnacolone rearrangement. In this rearrangement, we have two OHs next to each other in our starting material, and with the use of an acid, we will create a double bond O. So let's see how it is done. As you might know, OH is a very, very poor living group. The reason it's a poor living group is because if it leaves, it will be ready to attack because it's also a very strong nucleophile. So first, our acid will, have, will help to make one of the OHs a good living group. It doesn't matter which one, this molecule is symmetrical here. So I'm going to draw my acid out, H3O+. And the, uh, the electrons from the oxygen will take the hydrogen from the acid, the bond will break. And so what I will make is a an extra hydrogen on this oxygen and now we will have a positive charge and now this OH became, became OH2 and it became a very good leaving group so it went from a bad leaving group bad LG leaving group to a good leaving group good leaving group what do good leaving groups do? they leave so let's go ahead and we will show it leave and when it leaves the carbon that um, the carbon that is left behind will have a positive charge because it lost the bond and the rest of the molecule is the same. Let's move a little. So what happens next? Basically, pinnacle pinnacolone rearrangement is just a case of our regular carbocation rearrangement. So we could have an alkyl shift or a hydride shift when we get to the carbocation. Since we see that my ring was a 6-carbon ring, but it became a 5-carbon ring, that means that it was an alkyl shift. One of the carbons must have moved. How do you know which carbon moves? When you have a carbocation, you're supposed to look at the carbons neighboring the carbocation. So I have this carbon, this carbon, and this one neighboring the carbocation. Our, we are looking at the carbon that is more substituted or somehow would be better for positive charge. So the current carbocation is tertiary. The carbon here is also tertiary. This carbon is primary because it's only attached to one carbon and this carbon is attached to two carbons so it's secondary. So the best neighboring carbon we would be looking at would be this carbon that has an OH group on it. Let me just erase it. Um, now, how do we know which what to move from the neighboring carbon? So any bond from the neighboring carbon could move in a carbocation rearrangement. So we could move either this bond, this bond, or that bond. However, if you know that your ring changes shape, so here we went from a cyclohexane to a cyclopentane, which means that our ring has changed its shape, that means we have to move a bond that is inside the ring. If we move any of the bonds outside the ring, then the ring will stay intact. It will be a cyclohexane. And we know that the ring cannot stay intact. So the only bond on the neighboring carbon that's inside the ring is this one. I'm going to go ahead and move it this way. Now, if you're confused about how to draw this um, and what the final, what the resulting product will be, what we can do is we can redraw our molecule like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the bond that moved. That's the bond that moved. I erase it and I draw a new bond. The new bond is between this carbon that used to be a carbocation and this carbon. And so that's my new molecule. Now one of the carbons still gets a carbocation, it's just no longer on this one because it got the new bond. The carbon that receives a carbocation, a positive charge, the carbon that gets a positive charge is the carbon that is missing the bond. As you can see here, when my bond moved, this carbon is missing a bond. Also, it was that original neighboring carbon that we were looking at. And this is my resulting product so far. Now I can go ahead and I can redraw it more pretty. I will number it one, two, three, four, five. So I have a five member ring. 
I'm going to number it one, two, three, four, five. My one has a methyl group and it also has this group with the OH and a positive charge. And so what I can do next is I can look from my molecule to the product and I see that the product has a double bond O. So this carbocation is actually resonance stabilized. I can move electrons here and that is how I will get my double bond O. The double bond O here uh, will also be connected to hydrogen with a positive charge. So I'm almost at my product. And the last thing that I need to do is I just need to take off this hydrogen so I can use water to take it off. The electrons from the hydrogen, from the oxygen go to the hydrogen. This bond breaks, goes to the oxygen and I get my final product. Let's just do a brief overview of this rearrangement again, just to understand it. Um, so we can do it in the future. So if we see ever that we have two OHs next to each other and they're made into a double bond O, this is this kind of rearrangement, pinacol, pinacolone rearrangement. You don't really have to know it name, its name, you just have to be familiar with carbocation rearrangements in general to do this problem. So first oxygen gets protonated to become OH2 because originally it is a very bad living group and then when it gets protonated it becomes a good living group and it can leave creating a carbocation here. Then we have to shift something so we're looking at the carbon neighboring our carbocation which is this carbon that's next to an OH group. And we can move any of its bonds to the carbocation, but we're choosing to move the bond inside the ring so that my ring will change its shape. It will go from a cyclohexane to a cyclopentane. Then we can redraw our product, erase the bond that moved and, and draw the new bond. And then we can number the product and redraw it um, in a better way. And then the last part is that this looks like a double bond, so I'm just going to erase it and I'm going to show it as a single bond. And the last part is that electrons from the oxygen can move down to make a double bond O, which is what we want. And then my water can take the hydrogen and give electrons to the oxygen. I hope you found this lesson helpful and I look forward to seeing you more in my general chemistry and organic chemistry videos.